They remind me of flags. I don't know why. I think I quite like this setup, especially because of that like diamond shape that we made there with the pink. Right, so the dilemma now is deciding on the neckline for this piece. Essentially, it's one of those pieces that you don't really know how to turn out until you are finished. So that letting go of control, this kind of design forces you to go through the experience. What's up, Kiddivas, and welcome back to another sewing vlog. This is going to be another exciting upcycling project. I haven't done one of these in a while, like in a long while. And I think the inspiration came when I did the video where I shared how much I had spent on fabrics. And I realized I had a lot of scraps. So I was like, why don't I just make something with all of those scraps that I could wear around the house or even wear out now and later on in the year when it gets warmer. So this, I decided to work with all of my satin, silky, shiny, lustrous, soft fabrics in a variety of colors from white to pink to purples, a little bit of green and teal in there too. I just went with the wind, honestly, like there was no like plan for the neckline. I'm just figuring it out as I go along and I hope you guys enjoy the process. I'm going to be creating a gown, more of like a boo-boo abaya style. So it's nice and loose, but you can add a belt around the waist if you want a definition. Okay, make sure to keep on watching to the end to find out what the result is. I am just as curious as you are because I have no idea how this dress is going to turn out. But I'm sure it's going to be something cool, something unique and something I would enjoy wearing. You know, now, and when it gets warmer, even on holiday. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with anyone that you think would enjoy it or find it useful to watch. And let's get into this video. The first thing I'm going to be working on with my intern is going through my fabric scrap piles just to separate the style and color of scraps I wanted to use. I set aside all the satin and silky fabrics so they are sort of in the same family. In terms of color, I just used whatever I had but you can choose to work with like similar color tones if you want to. Now I went ahead to cut triangular shapes that measure 12 inches in height and 8 inches width at the bottom of the triangle. I didn't create a pattern for this. Once I had cut out the first piece or the first triangular shape, I used that as a guide to cut all the other pieces. I cut a few in white, in teal, in emerald green, in peach, in pink and in navy blue as well as lavender. These are fabric scraps that I have generated from working over the last I'll say 12 to 18 months. Now the way I decided to join the triangles was to join the longest side together like this. So once they are joined they create a squarish rectangular looking shape. So I'm just going to start by joining it off along this edge like so on a one centimeter seam allowance. After stitching like this, I went in to overlock and my lovely intern really helped here because there were a lot of triangles to join. Oh my god, we spent the whole afternoon just joining shape after shape, triangle after triangle. I will try to combine the colors in such a way that there was a really nice contrast and we didn't put two of the same colors together. So now that we had all of them joined, we're going to be making a row of four of these sets. So we have a piece that once we join together, I'll be able to use to make like a big rectangular piece. When I was pinning the rows, I also mixed and played around with the color and the direction of the lines. So that way I'm able to create interesting shapes, interesting color schemes as I put this piece together. <music> Okay, so Matt has done a lovely job of pressing and joining all of the individual pieces that we did yesterday. So we have, I believe we have eight of these sets. So a set is made up of four. So one, two, three, four. And the plan is to join them up to create a big piece for the front and for the back before we go in to cut the neckline, add the sleeve opening and finish of the hem and many other parts. 
they remind me of flags i don't know why i know the flags at like picnics or like a circus that's what the whole color combination just reminds me of this is our progress so far we ended up just playing around with the placement of the rows that we've joined and i think i quite like this setup especially because of that like diamond shape that we made there with the pink the lavender and then that print so this might be this is looking like it would be the front with the neck opening around there and the hemline here so that's one set that we have created the total length is 43 inches i forgot to measure the width but yeah this is what it's looking like for the other side which would be the back this side is a lot brighter this side is a lot brighter just from looking at it there's a lot of whites a lot of pinks it's not as um contrasty as that side but this would be where the neck is and that would be the hem and the plan is just to join everything together so we have one big sheet and then join sides create a room for the arms to go through as well as finish off the hem to finish the dress we're just going in here to join all of the rows so we have a large rectangular piece to cut the front and the back of this dress so the dilemma now is deciding on the neckline for this piece initially the original inspiration was something asymmetric that goes down like that and then comes down here which i've already done on the channel and i wanted something different so i think i'm going to do a cold shoulder effect which is when you have a little bit of your top arm peeking through and then a normal round neck the neck has to be wide enough for my head to go through though so i don't have to put any zips or buttons but that is the plan okay this is what the front is looking like there we go so i'm just going to draw in the the neckline here how much i'm going to be shaving off for the cold shoulder and i want the front and the back to be the same so that gives the freedom to wear this side as the back or the the back as the front and it's kind of like reversible in a sense Because I don't have a sewing pattern, I'm going in to draw the neckline straight onto the fabric which is folded in half. The neckline is 2 inches low from the top edge and it's 3.5 inches wide and it's a simple round neckline. I'm just drawing it here in with a chalk with the help of the curved end of my pattern master. Once I have this neckline shaped in place, next up I'm going to draw the cold shoulder opening. Now I try to make this not too wide so it shows just the right amount of skin and it's not dropping or falling off my shoulder. Now once I had the cold shoulder openings drawn in, I went ahead to cut the neckline the opening for the coat shoulder detail and i also slanted the shoulder seam just a little bit downward so when it's on the body it has a relaxed fit on the arm now once i was done cutting the front i used it as a guide to cut the back so we have the same neckline for both pieces and that would allow me to wear the piece like front as the back and back as the front now I'm just going in here and opening the piece like so and I'm putting right sides together. So much color, so much chaos but I love it. And I am going ahead to pin the sides and the shoulder seams leaving roughly about 6 inches open for the arms to come out of the side of the dress. Now I'm just going in here to join the shoulder seams as well as the side seams of this piece after which I went back in to overlock all of those seams. And that's how I plan to finish this dress, literally just stitch and overlock so it looks nice and tidy on the inside. I also went ahead to overlock the neckline and the cold shoulder opening and this is what the piece is looking like. I also gave it a press where necessary before going ahead to fold and pin the edges that I want to hem. So this opening here where the cold shoulder detail is going to be that I'm going to fold and sew. I'm also going to fold and sew the neckline on the front and on the back as well as the arm opening. Now initially here I had the opening really wide but I went back in to close it up a little bit because too much of my 
my bra and my underwear were just showing from the side i also went in to hem the bottom of the dress as well so i know i had it ready to add the shoulder strap to we made the shoulder strap about half an inch wide and this you would cut a long strip sew and turn inside out to create a strap that looks like this we made two one for each side of the shoulder and if you don't want to create a shoulder strap you can also use a bias tape and just sew it close and then attach that to the front and back necklines of your piece now i'm going to have my intern quickly stitch this up for me give the piece a nice press and try it on to see if it looks all right okay so i am all done making the dress this is what it looks like at first i was not really feeling it let me be very honest i thought it was just a little bit of too much going on but i slept i woke up and i wore it again and you know what there is a mood and a time and a place for this dress i feel like this would be the dress that you would wear to turn up at a very chill cocktail do preferably when it gets warmer if i'm being very honest because wearing this right now because it's like five degrees outside it's really wearing this right now is just a little bit risky except if you're going to be into your car out of your car and indoors again but this is also a great piece to wear at home just to lounge i also say it looks quite nice with a belt because once you add the belt it just cinches in the waist and changes the style up a little bit how are we feeling about this i think this is something that would be really cool if you played around with colors in the same scheme so maybe like shades of pinks shades of red or like monotone sort of like black white gray print i think that would look really cool as well essentially it's one of those pieces that you don't really know how to turn out until you are finished so that letting go of control this kind of design forces you to go through the experience so this is what it looks like all done i'm definitely wearing this on holiday nobody can tell me anything this on the beach like with sandals and a hat and sunglasses i can already imagine it to look really really cool really chic and very different nobody will find this piece anywhere else and it was a great way to use scraps and bits of fabric that i had lying around the studio if you did enjoy watching this video please give it a thumbs up comment down below any other upcycling project ideas because i want to try and do at least one every month in 2022 because i have a lot of scrap fabrics left and i want to try and like you know repurpose them and give them life if you also have any other video ideas share in the comment section down below if you're recreating this please tag me tag me at kim dave designs because i want to see how someone else would imagine this piece different from how i've done it i'm actually very very curious so make sure to tag me at kim Dave designs on instagram facebook tiktok and i'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with until my next video have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye